Hey there, welcome to or welcome back to No Pants Profits. About five days ago, well exactly five days ago, I released a video on how Virgin Voyage's Scarlet Lady went from the best operated cruise ship I've ever been on to the worst operated cruise ship I've ever been on. Now let's be very clear. I'm not talking about the physical ship or anything like that. I'm talking about the operations, the way it runs. And I was very critical, and I still stand by everything I said in that video. But I've listened to all of you, and you know, you want to know how I think this can be fixed, and want a shorter version of how I think this can be fixed. So I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so giving you my thesis on how I believe Virgin Voyages can fix stuff before it's too late. But let's go ahead and let's start off, let's, let's roll back in time. And let's talk about my first Virgin Voyages sailing, because a lot of the foundations of these fixes are going to come from that. I am a sea blazer, which means you either sailed once in 2021, which is their first year of operation, first partial year of operation, or twice since then. My first cruise I went on was November 3rd to November 7th, 2021, and there were under 500 sailors on board. Then I went uh, from the 3rd to 8th of July, 2022, so about a year ago, right now, because it's 2023, uh, there were about eight, 900 sailors on board, 8th through 13th of July, did a back-to-back, -back. there were still about eight, 900 sailors on board, uh, 14th to 19th of August, 2022, there were, again, about a thousand sailors on board, and here's where stuff started to hit the fan was in November. I made some videos in November and December, so 2nd to the 6th of November, 2022, and this was across uh, both Scarlet and, uh, and uh, Valiant, not Resilient. Um, it was the 2nd to the 6th of November, 2022, and the 3rd to 11th of December, 2022. That is when I came up against this brick wall of 1,500 or more passengers. I think we were about 1,900 in December of 2022. And that's when the ship breaks. Operationally, that's when it breaks. The review I did, that I just recently did, was based on 2,400 passengers, which was um, early June, 9th to the 14th of June, and the 14th to the 18th of June, 24 to 2,500 passengers on board. And that is where we're going to start off, is limiting the number of passengers. I I'll tell you, Virgin says they're a high-tech cruise line. I'll show you something I literally got in the mail two days ago from when this is published, I got it today in reality, but I got this two days ago, a postcard taking me to allow J-Lo to invite my friends. Yeah, okay, that's marketing, but a postcard does not seem like uh, the right thing for getting the correct demographic they want on board. So I think one of the first things they really need to do is limit their capacity to about 1,700 sailors. Oh no, Richard, there's a problem. The ship holds a thousand more than that. Well, here's the thing to understand. The way the ship is built, the public areas in the ship, the restaurants in the ship, it really can't handle more than 15 to 1700 people a night. That list, this list I'm going through, the review I did, didn't just come from me, it came from crew members. I'll give you an example. I talked to crew members in all six of the restaurants. And they said they're being forced by, like crazy by their bosses to turn the tables more. Back in my first cruise, they turned the tables twice a night. Now they're turning the tables four times, five times a night because they have to. And their bosses are going absolutely nutty. Uh, the, the maitre d's, the restaurant managers, whatever you want to call them, are going nutty. You know why? Because the office is shoving more and more people in the same ship that they didn't build the public areas to have that many people on board. So I guess here's the question. How do you fix it? Now, you might say, well, how'd you go from 700 people on board, or 600 people, or 500 people, to a, uh, another number of people, and, you know, 25, 26, 2700? The only cruises that had those 25, 26, 2700 were Richard's birthday bash and things like that. And there's something Virgin did that a lot of you watching this may not know. They got rid of something. You know what you don't need to sail from Miami anymore? The, the cruises are mainly populated in Miami that are, that are full. If you go out of Europe, you're still going to be in that sweet spot range. But um, going out of Miami, they no longer require a passport. I think that's a very interesting fact, is that going out of Miami, they no longer require a passport. That is why 
you're going to hate this right now. I believe not only the quantity of the passengers has gone up, which is a fact, you can look that up, but the quality of the passengers has gone down. You're going to hate me, you're going to say, Richard, you're terrible, you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're all this, but it's also the truth. People that are under litigation for felonies can't get a passport. People that are not paying their child support can't get a passport. If you wonder the joke about Carnival's passengers being rowdy and crazy, I'm willing to say this last cruise I went on was actually a lower class, worse quality mix than Carnival Cruises. And I go on Carnival a lot. I mean, I just got off the Carnival Luminosa. My entire cruise history is on this YouTube channel. So you have to require passports. What is that going to do? That is going to increase the quality of your passengers. Now, yes, I know they got some passengers from other cruise lines and they got a whole bunch of Karens over. They got a huge number of Karens came over from celebrity complained. And that's why we don't have the sex doctor anymore. You know, that's why I don't know how long the thruple is going to last in another rose on the resilient lady. Just trying to say that's why, you know, the resilient lady version two, uh, they, they, what a season two, they say that the, Scarlet and Valiant were season one of entertainment and Resilient and Brilliant are season two. That's why season two is, you know, other than a couple little things, slightly less risque. So yeah, I, I really think, and that will keep the number of passengers down, but we have to talk about revenue. We're going to get into how you make money as well, but you got to go back to requiring passports. Literally, if you don't believe me, go to the FAQ page on um, Virgin's website, type in passport uh, or the help section, and you'll see that you no longer need a passport. It's one of the few cruise lines that uh, does not require passports for adults. They, a lot of the other ones will not require them for kids. Don't worry. I know you're saying it's a vibe and the main reason you like Virgin is because there's no kids. Again, like I said in the other video, go sail Celebrity, go sail Holland America, go sail Princess when the kids are in school. There ain't going to be any kids on board. It's not that big of a unique selling proposition. So you got to keep it to about 1700 require passports. That's going to bring in higher spend customers. Um, that's just the truth. And it's going to bring in higher quality passengers, ones that don't want to start fights and stuff like that. I saw some sketchier things on this last cruise I was on. Number two, this might seem a little weird, but it gets you to a different market and it will also help their casino. Be the first cruise line. That's how you fix it. It sounds weird. Be the first cruise line to accept crypto payments. Now, I'm not saying every shitcoin here, there, everywhere. I'm talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum A. And if you want to go funny, accept Dogecoin. Accept payments for crypto, and you're opening yourself up to a wealthier market. That's kind of the, the important thing is you got you to gotta open yourself up to that wealthier market. Now, another thing that's a big controversy that... Um, Many people told me they had to wait half an hour in line to get drinks. Now, I didn't. Uh, the main place I was drinking on my last two cruises was in the casino. My bartender was tipped very well. I know. Oh, no. Virgin says no tipping. Uh, my bartender was tipped very well. You know, every time he'd come get a, come give me a drink. Oh, where is this? I used to have a Virgin casino chip in here. Every time he'd come give me a drink. Oh, here we go. Every time he'd come give me a drink, you know, he just throw one of those casino chips their way and guess what you never wait too long for a drink um drink packages this is gonna be weird so i'm saying to put less guests on board you need more money you're already giving out the 600 dollars or 300 dollars in sailor loot depending on if it's a seven day or more voyage or a, or a six day or more or seven day or more voyage let's talk about a drink package and let's talk about building your drink package into your price uh, it's actually kind of weird. When Virgin came out, they used to say basic bevies uh, were included with soda and everything like that. And it's still, but they've changed it from basic bevies to essential beverages. I don't know, maybe that confused people. But here's my logic. Add $100 per day to every ticket. Very similar in price to your bar tab. You're actually going to make more money. And that $100 per day will include unlimited domestic beer and house spirits. Now, those house spirits and domestic beer, let's not even do the house spirits. So you can either get it straight or you can get it in a premixed margarita, a premixed rum and coke, a premixed rum punch. If you want to pay, you can pay for the higher end stuff. But this solves the bar problem. I'll tell you, I've always had a bar problem on Virgin. If you go out to their pool, 
I say that because it's like a little toddler waiting area, and then there's a little pool in the middle that has 14 guests. But, you know, if you go out to their pool, um, you're going to wait a half an hour for a drink. Also, it's kind of weird that the only place you can get a pina colada is outside on the pool deck. They don't serve it inside. None of the other bars have blenders. Yeah, that might not be the vibe, but, you know, your classic cruise passengers that um, have a passport and have money to spend and are loyalty guests that are going to give you a very high net promoter score and tell their friends about you and everything like that. I mean, I used to be that person. I used to be Virgin Voyages, Scarlet Lady is the best cruise line in the world. Well, now I, I can't openly recommend it to anybody unless I know the ship is going to be empty. And who knows how long you can make that recommendation, but you've got to have that hard ceiling at like 1700. What is that? That means all the restaurants can turn over three times a night. The crew aren't angry. The crew aren't unhappy. I'll tell you, the crew on Virgin are not happy. How do I know that? I worked on cruise ships for seven years. I know code words speak to the crew. Uh, I'm not going to say them to you because you don't need to know them. Well, I'll, I'll give you one. Yeah, you've got sige, sige, la gege, pineapple, banana, I'm not gonna tell you what those mean. Uh, or um, my favorite, suck, suck, boom, boom. You say these things to the crew and they know you know what you're talking about. A lot of the crew also came from celebrities, so I actually know a nice mix of the crew and I've had discussions with them. And they said the passenger mix is getting worse, it's getting fuller, they're not getting tips, they're all salaried, so they're not getting paid anymore. The new employees that are coming in are being paid less than the old employees that have been there forever just not a good situation so you know you kind of have to uh take the good with the bad but w when you limit the number these employees can do three seatings a night three seatings a night is standard on a cruise ship of uh, a um, not fixed seating but the come as you want dining time three seatings a night is pretty standard doing four and a half to five seatings a night is insane but that's the only way they can run 24 25 2600 people through their restaurants and it really messes with the experience now another thing i found really good on scarlet lady was world poker tour the world poker tour room now again you're not attracting the right clientele for that right now and world poker tour is doing their own cruise so their own you know charter of the scarlet lady that's going to have poker tables everywhere good luck uh you know it, it it's really the the idea is world poker tour is going to do that whole charter there but maybe this is just me thinking out of the box. Maybe if Virgin were to decide, because, oh, hold on, we didn't say this. Virgin Voyages has nothing to do with Branson. He's a figurehead. He has a very small percentage. Let's say that you were going to rebrand the ships. World Poker Tour at Sea might not be the worst idea. I'm dead serious. Uh, world Poker Tour is actually a huge organization. They're in every casino. They're all over the world. You know, instead of valiant, scarlet, brilliant, and resilient, you can have the... Uh, Ace, hearts, clubs, and spades. You got four ships. You got four suits. I know it sounds crazy, but it's an option on the table. But expanding that brand is going to bring you in a more worldwide clientele and a higher quality clientele. Remember, it's about quality, not about quantity. The spaces, the public spaces on the ship are not big enough. The pool, literally both the pools together. Uh, I, I think uh, have 38 or 39 people capacity if you combine both of their pools together. I think 38, yeah, it's uh, 24, 24 and 14. So, uh, yeah, 38 people capacity across both of their pools. It's kind of crazy. But expanding that World Poker Tour brand might actually bring in a better, a different, whatever you want to call it, clientele. Now, Another factor that's gotten way out of control, when there were four, five, six hundred, seven hundred people on board, no problem. You want to go to the drag show, you go to the drag show. Now the drag show has become an absolute shit show. I said it. We're late enough in the video. We're 14 minutes into the video. The drag show has become an absolute shit show. So just like they did on the, um, on the Resilient Lady, they should make the drag show a paid event. Now, the paid events include alcohol. They include more alcohol than you'd be otherwise paying for, and it's drinks that are not going to be served in this drink package uh, in the scheme of things. So, you know, you can do a drag brunch right there. You can do it in razzle-dazzle. You can make it a paid event. You can limit the capacity, and then you've got it. Because everything else with their 
capacities they're having on board right now. They're 2,500. I made another video that talked about that it was hard to get into anything. So you got to get, if you get it back down to that 1,700 number, then it's a little more acceptable because you can do dual reality three times and you're only leaving 200 people out. You can do a lot of these things and you, you, you leave a lot less people out. Everything's selling out by three o'clock. If you don't get on with the Splash of Romance package uh, at, at 2 o'clock or 1.45, you're not going to get anything. Now, I want to go into the crazier ideas uh, for these last five minutes here. Uh, and I want to hear your thoughts on all this. You know, we'll go, we'll go over it again. But um, I don't know if any of you have heard. There's a company called Atlantis Events and a company called Bliss Cruises. And what do they do? Well, they do gay cruises, Atlantis. And Bliss Cruises does both naked and swinger cruises. Now... That's a market that they do go to Virgin once a year, and what they'll do is they'll charter out the whole ship. But why wouldn't it be a smart idea for Virgin to go after those different groups themselves? Imagine if they were to have a, you know, a section that's just for swinging. I know it's going to get the Karens really angry, but imagine if they were to have a section of the ship that's just for swinging. Imagine for a moment... Let's go wild right now. You know, we got to get the capacity down. You've got a whole bunch of rooms that are available. And they're already, you know, they're waiving the single supplement for people and stuff like that. But imagine if you had, I'm going to say it, unicorn and dragon rates. And you're like, what the fuck is a unicorn and a dragon? Well, a unicorn is a woman that will sleep with either a man or a woman. And a dragon is a man that will sleep with either a man or a woman. Give them a better rate to come on board and grow your swinging culture. Now, speaking of that, you know, everyone might not be swingers. Another way to benefit is you do have the Virgin Voyages app. I mean, crap, crap app, appy crap, crap, crap. But imagine if they were to take an onboard kind of dating thing and put it in there so you can meet people that you wouldn't otherwise meet. Yes, I know. Look, I've got people, I talked to two sets of people when I was on the ship. I got people that had specific problems. They couldn't get into dinner. They had to wait long for a drink. They had to, they couldn't get into the drag show. They couldn't get into dual reality. They couldn't get into ships in the night. They couldn't get into the grog walk. They couldn't get into this event. They couldn't get into that event. But the interesting thing is, the other side is just saying, it's a vibe. I believe the people that are saying, it's a vibe, uh, and, and you know, there's someone that very clearly said on one of the groups, I'm, I'm in all these groups because I want to know, they said, well, Virgin was better before, but the people are better now, so it's a vibe. They're just trying to rationalize what they're paying and rationalize that they're overpaying for the experience they are receiving. Now, also another thing that's important is you do have to have more free events on the sea days. Most of the events on the sea days are charged events, or guess what? Everyone goes out and crams into the 14-person pool or the 24-person pool. Yay! You know, and on the sea days, the food in the galley is the same every single day. Yay! You've got to speed that up. You've got to offer variety. And yes, they're starting to do a little bit of that in their food and drink month, but not much. Now... Again, these ideas didn't just come from me. Who did they come from? Well, they actually came from the crew. Um, and I, I talked to the crew. I talked to all the crew. I, I know people from other cruise lines. I worked for Celebrity for seven years. I'm being as um, broad as I can because I don't want to get anybody else in trouble. But there's just too many people on board. And what Virgin has to focus on is they focused on quantity. You want to talk about a quantity move? Sending a damn postcard. That's a quantity move. Hold on. Let me, let me, I don't want to have my name out here. My full name. Well, all oh, the lights went out. Uh, sending a postcard. That's a quantity move. But they're literally telling you to go, go get your friends and come see what all of our sailors are raving about. Yeah, they're raving about the fact that you used to be good and now your ships are way too full. So let's wrap it up. Number one. Require passports. Uh, well, before that, limit yourself to about 1,700 people on board. Yes, the ships can hold 2,700, but your public areas are just not big enough to hold 2,700 people. Number two, well, we'll call it number one. Require passports. It's going to get you quality passengers on board instead of quantity passengers on board because you want those quality passengers on board. Number two, accept crypto payments. It's something different. No one in the industry is doing it. It's edgy. It's unique. I love crypto. I'm a fine dude. You're watching this on what was a finance channel. Uh, number three, 
built in a low-level drink package that has domestic beers, house spirits that are pre-mixed in a couple drinks. And that'll be built in. That will allow you to charge an extra few hundred dollars per person. And yes, you've got people that already have bar tabs. If you have a bar tab, we'll just convert you over to that if you'd like to be converted over to that. Do that. It will decrease your, um, your serving times needed for the bar. Uh, you may want to consider putting it out, a limit on it like Carnival does so people don't get out of control, but hey, you know, you do you. Look at expanding the World Poker Tour brand. It's a great brand. It's a great gambling brand. It might even be a potential, because again, Virgin Voyages is a branding opportunity. The ships will still be owned. It may even be a potential for a rebrand. I think you can get more people of a higher quality on board with the World Poker Tour brand than the Virgin brand. I know it sounds weird. Drag Brunch. Make it an upcharge event. You can't control it anymore. You got too many people on board, uh, and you just can't control it anymore. And some unique things to the Virgin Voyages app, dating stuff. Well, not really dating, but kind of like a, a function to to meet people uh, and connect with people, as well as you know, if you've got a bunch of rooms because you're only going to limit to 1,700, get you some uh, unicorns and dragons on board, and that might work really well. This is a list I've come up with in the last week. I've got a lot more ideas, and I'm happy to talk to any of you in the comments. I'm happy to talk to Virgin directly if they want to reach out. Nopantsprofits at gmail.com. Plus, hey, I've been on at least in my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, hold on, seven, eight Virgin Cruises uh, that's in my account so far. I think there's some that aren't even in my account. Uh, but eight Virgin Cruises in the past, uh, Virgin Voyages in the past that are in my account. I was a very high promoter. I loved it. And, it, the, you know, the entertainment's still good. It doesn't change from ship to ship. Well, even though now we're in, we're in season two on the newer ships. Uh, the entertainment, still good. The food, other than waiting time to get the food or hard to book reservations, I think the food quality's still pretty good. I, I had a very good upcharge dish both at uh, Gun Bay and at Extra Virgin. So, I mean... That's good. The problem is your public areas, I'm talking to Virgin right now, just cannot handle the number of people you have on board. So you have to work on quality over quantity. If you don't do that, you're going to go belly up. It's a fact. I can watch. I can see operations. I can see what's going on. You might say, hey, Rich just doesn't get the vibe. This isn't for him. When you get into the events, I still love it. When you, when you get into the drag show, when you get into Lotteria Gigante, which was a new event that I really liked, they're great. The problem is you just can't do it with that many people on board. I want to hear your thoughts below. I know this is, some of this might sound reaching. Some of this might sound crazy. You know, I, even turning cabins that are not being used into playrooms. If you know what that is, that's something that's used in the swinging community. Um, there are rooms that are not your own room where you can go have fun with other people and they don't know where you live. So if you didn't have fun, uh, you don't have to see them again. You fill them with, yeah, I'm, I'm not going there. Uh, but, you know, there's some crazy ideas. There's some things that Virgin's not willing to do that might increase your quality of passengers because the crew are leaving in droves. I spoke to multiple crew in every single restaurant. I say, this is going downhill so fast. And they're going to put on a smile. They're happy crew members uh, for you as a passenger. But, you know, you know the secret words. And I like to say uh, my favorite is suck, suck, boom, boom. That means uh, get it done really quick. And that comes from uh, um, places of uh, paid affection. I think that's a way, a way to say it. You know, <laughs> suck, suck, boom, boom. But... This is Richard from No Pants Profits. I want to know what you think about these things below. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm not an evil guy. I respond to every comment, and I want to show Virgin how to fix things. So this is Richard from No Pants Profits with um, my ways on how I think Virgin can fix a lot of what's going on before it completely breaks. Got any questions, comments, concerns? Leave them down below. You want to talk to me more privately? NoPantsProfits at gmail.com. Says Richard from No Pants Profits, reminding you that when you wear no pants, there's only one thing you got left to lose, and that is your shirt. Have a great one. Bye.